welcome to my channel if you haven't been here before or welcome back if you watch my videos and if you do i thank you so so much as always i love to upcycle clothes and turn thrifted items into fun edgy pieces to wear or sell create purses jewelry you name it today we are working on a jean jacket and this is a pretty simple um project it does take some sewing but you get a lot of bang for your buck out of this it's just a jean jacket and some scrap denim that i had and you can create like a fun piece to wear to a festival or a country concert or every day if you like so let's get started i will be using this jean jacket now it says 1x but it seems awful small for a 1x but I did want a larger size, and you will too, because we will be sewing on the outside of this, and the sewing machine will have to come in the front and down the sleeve, but it won't be able to go all the way. You'll have to bring the sewing machine back in this way. So you want to make sure you have a wide sleeve. A narrow fitted jacket probably wouldn't work on the the technique that we're using. I am going to crop my jacket and I will lose the pocket. Pockets on the side aren't that big of a deal for me and I don't mind losing them. I'd rather have a nice cropped jacket than have the pockets be intact. You know, just personal preference. Once I get this cut off, I'll have to kind of stitch that pocket closed so that it doesn't look ripped open. But the first thing I'm going to do is just take a marker. You know, I could use a piece of chalk, but I'll just use a marker. And I want to save, there's a button right here and a button right here at the bottom. I want to save that button. So I am going to go up four and a half inches and make a mark. And that'll just be underneath that button. And I will just go around my entire jacket and mark four and a half inches up from the bottom. Once I have that all marked, I'm just going to cut off that bottom. And I'll just cut all the way around. Now what I'm going to do is see all these seams that we just cut I don't want my jacket to come apart at all those seams, so I am going to run a zigzag stitch an inch up from the bottom. Now this buttonhole, I'll just kind of jog around, but I'll go an inch from the bottom up all the way across, and that will sew my pocket shut, and it will preserve those seams from continuing to rip open. And I will just use gold thread because that's the color of the stitching of the jacket and a zigzag stitch. Now that I have my zigzag stitch, I want to do one more thing to the bottom and this will fray nicely in the washer and dryer naturally but I just want to enhance that fraying and make it look a little extra so I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to chop along the bottom here and there and you know quarter inch half inch little slits just all along the bottom. I'm just chopping that up and where I cut those, it'll fray a little extra in those spots. So I'll do that all the way around the jacket. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside in a second, but I just wanna give you kind of a briefing on what we're going to do. I am going to cut panels of fringe to sew along this arm seam, up around the back and down the other arm seam. And I have about 54 inches, I measured that seam, about 54 inches of fringe I need to cut, and I'll show you how I do that. So I just went to my denim scrap pile and grabbed a bunch of remnants, and they are subtly different colors. I don't have a super dark or super light, but 
they will be sort of different colors along the back. Now I decided I want my fringe to be a foot long and so I'm just going to have to piece these pieces together as I sew. So first I'll take a pant leg here. This is kind of noisy. I'm using my electric scissors. Okay, and I'm going to open that up and I'm going to cut along this seam. because I don't want seams in my fringe. That'd just be too thick and wouldn't have good movement. So now this little panel that I have with no seams, I'm just going to lay my ruler down and just cut 12 inches. And I'm just going to collect a bunch of panels like this. This is a little odd shape. Okay. So I'll just keep cutting through here and trying to find 12 inch sections until I believe I have enough that will create approximately that 54 inch long seam. Once I have my panels all cut out, I will go to each one of them and I will make a little chalk mark about half an inch down from the top. And I didn't measure that. I just took my ruler and made a little mark. And I am going to cut strips up to that mark. And let's see. They'll be about half an inch apart or half an inch wide. And I'll just keep doing that until I have enough to go along that entire seam. Now, just because the denim is one color doesn't mean you can't turn it over if you want a lighter color and go with the lighter color on the back. And that's what I'll be doing a lot of here. Now, if you have a cutting mat and a rotary cutter, you can use that, whatever you're most comfortable with. I'm using an electric scissors to save my wrist. You can use the scissors. You could use your rotary cutter and just cut up to that line. So now I have about 54 inches of fringe cut from the denim panels. And now I'm going to pin these onto my jacket. Now I'm just going to start pinning at one end of the sleeve and then pin all the way over. Now the sleeve has a little cuff here that opens. I won't sew anything along that. I'll start at the opening and I will just take my pins and just kind of pin that in place. I'll have to stick my hand inside the jacket or I could stick a cardboard in there, but this shouldn't take too long. It's pretty easy. And then when I get that one pinned, I'll just grab another piece, lay it next to it. I might slightly overlap it and continue pinning along this seam, along the back seam, and down the other arm. And I don't know if you can tell but I'm pinning slightly underneath of that seam. I want to still see that seam. It's a nice little detail that I want to keep. Now that I have it all pinned on, I'm going to take it to my machine and I'll take you with me to my machine. I'll show you how I kind of work this out. I'm going to start in the middle of the jacket, the middle and the back and do one side and come down the sleeve and then come up the sleeve, but I'll show you all that. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I'll go to the other side and work on that. You just have to be patient. Sleeves can be kind of difficult to get through the machine, but if your sleeve is wide enough, it's totally doable. I'm going to set my machine on the largest zigzag stitch that I have. Now I'm going to remove that front plate and I'm going to slide.
This is the collar, the top. I'm going to slide that in first and find sort of the center of my jacket. And I just want to work with a little bit at a time. That's why I'm starting at the center and going this way. And I'm going to see how far I can get down the arm before I have to switch it around. And I'll show you that. And I'm just stitching along that half an inch that we left, the fringe and then half an inch. I'm just stitching along that pretty much down in the center. Okay, so now I'm getting down into the sleeve and I am just going to take my time and just kind of go an inch at a time and make sure everything underneath is moved out of the way and do a little sewing. And I'll just keep doing that until I absolutely can't go any further and then I'll show you what I do. Okay, I got pretty far. So here's the end of my sleeve. And here I am at the sewing machine or the needle. I only have a couple pins left to go. I can't go any further. So I'm just going to back stitch. And then I'm going to just pull my jacket out and come in from this side and I'll show you. Okay, so now I have to finish See the stitching ended there. I just had this little bit to finish. And so this won't fit over my sewing machine. Maybe if you have a really big jacket, it will fit over this arm. Mine will not. So I have to grab the sleeve and then push down this side, the back side, and I'll just lay it in my sewing machine at the end of that fringe stitch and back stitch. Now I'll just have to kind of move this out of the way and work that through. This is like a, li a little inch at a time, just like we did the first part. Until I get to the stitching where we stop. Now I have half of it all sewn. And it's time to do the other half. Now to do the other half, I can't put the collar end in first. I have to put the bottom of the jacket where we did that zigzag and that little clipping. I have to put that in in order for it to line up correctly with my sewing machine and needle. And I'm back to the middle and I'm meeting that other stitch line that we just sewed. And I will just be going in from this end. And do the same thing. I'll work it all the way down the sleeve till I can't go any further and come up from the bottom. Okay, I have the fringe all sewn on. Now I'm going to wash it and dry it on regular cycles and it will fray and I will probably have to clip some long strings, but we'll do that together. I'll show you what it'll look like. But um, you can actually wash it in a delicate cycle and line dry it if you don't want much fraying. I want the bottom to fray nicely, so I'm going to do a regular cycle. Here it is out of the washer and dryer. When I got it out of the washer, it was pretty tangled, and I just had to go through with my scissors and cut some major fringes that were kind of tying these together, tangling these together. So. Now it's out of the dryer, and I am just going to trim some of the major fringes. But you know, you can leave them all if you'd like. I will leave a lot, but I will just trim a little bit on here. 